Hello everyone, it's Jen from Old Tinker Studio. In this tutorial, we will be learning about animation nodes in Blender 2.9. This tutorial is using Blender 2.9, but you can also follow along with Blender 2.83. So let's get on with the tutorial. Animation nodes is a node-based visual scripting system designed for motion graphics in Blender. You can download the Blender add-on from the Animation Nodes website. The link is in the description. For the most part, the interface of the Animation Nodes is located in the Node Editor, while other parts of the interface exist in the 3D viewport and other areas of Blender. You can access the Node Menu Editor by choosing Animation Nodes under the Editor Type drop-down menu. To add a new node tree, click on New. You can also rename the node tree in the Name field. You can access the node menu to add a single node using Shift-A, just like you can with any other node in Blender. Control A can be used to open a search option. The node panel can be accessed using the N key. The item tab shows all the options for a particular node. The tool tab shows the available tools. The view tab is where the annotations are kept. The Node Tree tab contains setting and information about the node tree. Animation nodes look at the node tree and then converts those nodes into a script. In the top left corner of the node editor, you will notice a number. This is the time it takes for the execution of the node tree to take place. Automatic execution is the default. This option can be found in the Tool menu under the Node Tree tab. There are four options available under this option. Always is the default option, which means that the Node Tree is executed as much as possible. It is recommended to not use this option since it is CPU intensive. The Tree Changed option is used to execute every time there are changes to the Node Tree. The Frame Changed option executes the node tree every time the current frame changes in the scene. And the Property Changed option executes the node tree every time a property changes in the node tree. Minimum Time Difference defines the time between consecutive executions. If, for example, you set the value to 3, 3 seconds will pass before the node tree will be executed. The trigger is something that you use to watch for changes in a specific property. The Scene property is an option to choose a scene and the ID that is related to it. The Collection property is an option to choose a collection and an ID associated with it. The Object property is an option to choose an object and the ID that is associated with it. Let's now look at an example of using animation node. Delete the default cube and add a torus. And right click on it and choose Shade Smooth. The first thing we need to do before we can change the location, rotation, and scale of the torus is to add an object input node. Use Shift A to bring up the node menu. Under the Object category, choose Object to add an Object Input node. This node is used to select the object that we want to work with in the scene. Make sure the torus is selected, and then click on the eyedropper in the Object Input node. Since we want to manipulate the location, rotation, and scale of the torus, we need to add an Object Transforms Output node. Use Shift A to bring up the Node menu. Under the Object category, 
choose Transforms Output to add a Transform Output node. This node sets the location, rotation, and scale of an object. Connect the Object Input node to the Object Transforms Output node. For now, we will use Always for the execution type. The top row affects the location of the object. We can use any or all three of the axes to change the location. We click on X, we can now move the torus along the X axis. If we click on Y, we can now move the torus along the Y and X axis. If we then click on Z, we can now move the torus along all three axes. The middle row affects the rotation of the object. We can use any or all three axes to change the rotation. We click on X, we can rotate the torus around the X axis. If we also click on Y, we can now rotate the torus around the X axis and the Y axis. If we then click on Z, we can rotate the torus around all three axes. The bottom row affects the scale of the object. We can use any or all three axes to change the scale. We click on X, we can scale the torus along the X axis. If we also click on Y, we can now scale the torus along the X axis and the Y axis. If we then click on Z, we can scale the torus along all three axes. For simplicity's sake, we're going to just animate the rotation for the torus. Zero out the location and rotation for all the axes, and change the scale back to 1. From the Animation category, add a Time Info node. This node allows for animation playback. Open up the Item tab in the Node panel. This tab shows us that we have more options for this node than what we are currently shown. To show these other options on the node, Click on the monitor icon next to the options. Frame is the current frame. Start frame is the first frame of the scene playback. End frame is the end frame of the scene playback. Frame rate is the frame rate of the scene playback. Since we only want to affect the rotation this tutorial, we need to add a combine Euler node so we can use all three axes in the animation. Under the Rotation category, add a Combine Euler node. By default, this node uses radians as the measurement. But we can check the Use Degree option to use degrees instead. This means that each frame equals one degree of rotation. Connect the frame output of the Time Info node to the X axis input of the Combine Euler node. Connect the Euler output of the Combine Euler node to the rotation input of the Object Transforms Output node. A split an area and open up a timeline. Change the end frame to 90. If we play the animation, we see that the torus rotates around the x-axis 90 degrees over the 90 frames. If we want to speed up the animation, we need to add a math node. Under the number category, add a math node. 
between the Time Info node and the Combine Euler node. The Math node simply performs a variety of math operations. We will use the default of multiply. If we change the value to 10 and play the animation, we see that the torus is now rotating 10 times faster. If you have a request for a tutorial or a question about Blender, please feel free to leave a comment. If you're interested in learning more about 3D art and animation, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.